I have always wanted to be an engineer. And my parents can actually attest to this. They have video of me at my kindergarten graduation proclaiming that in front of a room full of parents and their video cameras. But when I was five, I didn't mean a civil engineer like I've become. I actually meant at that point an engineer like my hero, Thomas the Tank Engine. It wasn't actually until my senior year of high school, and I was the age of many of you in this room, that as I was flying over the city of Minneapolis, um, I was returning from an international environmental science competition. And I started dreaming about using my love of problem solving and all of this newfound knowledge I had on renewable energy, climate change, buildings, to reshape the world 30,000 feet below me. I started thinking about how I could take my talents and apply them to one of the most difficult problems facing our world today. And that problem is how to reshape our cities so that we can accommodate more people more population growth, and yet drastically reduce our impact on the environment by 80% or more. Now, if you think about it, that's a big challenge to have to do. We have 7 billion people on the planet, 3.5 billion of them already living in urban spaces. And the UN tells us that by 2050, we're going to have 10 billion people, and all of that growth, or the majority of it, is going to be in cities. And we have to do that while reducing our already staggering impact on the environment. Now, luckily, as an engineer, I'm trained to solve problems. I'm trained to deal with all of these challenges that we see in the world today. Yet, we can't apply the scientific method to the types of problems that we're facing. No, we don't have time to come up with a hypothesis, to test, to evaluate. These aren't the things we're taught to deal with in school. In fact, we have a term for them. We call them wicked problems, these large, big, intricate, complex, multifaceted problems that we don't even conceive of solutions for. We can't conceive of solutions for yet. But luckily for the world, luckily for us, I'm not the only one who's out there trying to tackle these problems. And it's not just climate change, it's poverty, it's global health, it's the economy, and of course, the environment. There's a whole team, hundreds, thousands, millions of politicians, social scientists, engineers, who are out there tackling these problems every day. But that's not enough. That's not what it's going to take to solve all of these problems and keep the world moving forward. It takes everyone. And luckily, you don't need a PhD from Stanford or some fancy degree to do it. You can go out and you can start today. That's what a team of students from Stanford did. We didn't really know what we were starting when we got into it. We really didn't even know what we were doing most of the time we were going through it. We just had a passion and a vision for tackling one of these large problems. And for us, it started with a house. Aptly named, we called it Start Home. We weren't just decided one day that we wanted to build a house, though we were spurred on by the US Department of Energy's Solar Decathlon competition which is a, an event that happens every two years and brings 20 university teams together to design and build solar-powered homes. They're meant to be affordable, attractive, comfortable to live in, and most importantly, net zero energy, meaning that they have to produce all of the electricity that they consume. Well, for two weeks, all these homes are brought together, tens of thousands of people tour them, and then they're evaluated in 10 contests in architecture, engineering, affordability, and other criteria. During these two weeks, the student designers and builders become the teachers, educating everybody who walks through about the future of energy efficiency, green building, and the future of homes themselves. Now, for an engineer who loves to solve problems, what better opportunity could there be? This is an open-ended design challenge to re-envision the way that we live. You may be too young to remember this, but that used to be a privilege predominantly reserved for corporations like Monsanto and Walt Disney. So, for us, this was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. We didn't want to just build a beautiful house and slap a few solar panels on top and then show it to the world. That's been done. And let's be honest, it helps, but it's not enough. We can't just let simple technologies try and save us. It's not going to happen. We need to take action. And we wanted to do this. We wanted to create something that would kickstart the home building industry down a more sustainable road. Or I guess if you want to be truly green, a more sustainable bike path. And we wanted to do it without giving up the comforts that all of us enjoy. Too often, green is associated with sacrifice. Um, in 1970s, uh, President Jimmy Carter famously said, turn down your thermostat and put on a sweater at home to save energy. Well, not everybody wants to do that. We have our creature comforts, and I'll be fully honest, I enjoy them, and I know the scale of the problems that we're facing. So how could we make a sustainable living experience and not give up those comforts? Now, this problem is not new. It's been around in the building industry for 40 years. But universally, the solution has been the same. Remove the human, remove the variable. Build a smart computer that controls the house based on what the average person wants. Oops. 
let the computer decide exactly how to control all of the windows, the air conditioning, the lights in the home, and then throw in some more energy efficient technologies, put on a few solar panels or other renewable energies to make it clean, and build a smarter computer. Well, the problem is the lights still get let on, left on, the rooms are still too hot or too cold, and honestly, we have no idea where all that energy, all that water is going. So we bring back control, and we do it in the name of comfort. We bring back the ability to control the temperature in the house, but we do it without showing what the energy and the water use is going to be. Now, this is a scary problem to me. Buildings use 41% of energy in the United States, 13% of the water, and produce 33% of the greenhouse gas emissions. And we don't even know where half of those resources are going. Most of us only interact with energy in our homes through three little holes in the wall that, frankly, to me, look either like a sad face or perhaps shocked. And maybe they're shocked that we, we don't actually know what we're taking from these resources. To us, to our design team, the fact that homes so often ignore their occupants, even when they purport to be sustainable, that's just ludicrous. We thought that sustainability has to embrace the homeowner. What happens if you move in 10 years and you don't take the technology with you? If you don't know what it did for you, you're just going to backslide into higher energy consuming patterns. Or maybe you renovate and you take it out entirely because you were never taught what it was actually achieving for you. So we wanted to show those impacts. We wanted to bring those forward and let the homeowner have agency over every decision, make informed choices. The house should teach the homeowner what it means to be sustainable. And conversely, you, the homeowner, should be able to teach the house what you want. Let's be honest, nobody in this room is the average person. Now before it starts to seem like this was an obvious revelation for our design team, it wasn't. We went through hundreds of design concepts, at least 10 different major concepts, and hundreds if not thousands of hours of debate and discussion over the facets of a truly sustainable building. And then we didn't just discuss it, we didn't just debate it, we didn't just model it, we actually went out and we built it. But that's what it takes to solve a wicked problem. Discuss, debate, design, and do. And that's what makes it so exciting. Now when it came down to it, we started with tried and true green building practices. We oriented the house to face south so that we could take advantage of passive heating. We added a lot of windows so that we could have natural lighting in the space. And where there was too much direct sun, we added shading so that it would be both a comfortable space and not get too warm inside. We also used thick insulated walls to regulate the interior temperature and then built a very tall space so that hot air could rise and exit through high windows, bringing nice cooler air back into where the people would be occupying it. This large space also meant that it was very flexible, very open, sociable, livable. Oh yeah, and uh, we put a few solar panels on the roof too. <laughs> but up until this point, this is still just a standard house, we hadn't done anything to change the paradigm of energy and water use. And in fact, it, you may have heard the phrase, a man's home is his castle. Well, it really implies that the house protects us from everything around us and we have domain over what goes on inside. The problem is those same walls, they shield us from knowing what our energy and water impacts are. We don't have domain over those choices. So we came up with a simple solution. We cut a window into the wall, not through it to see the outside, but actually into it. We mounted an iPad in the side of the wall that would allow the homeowner to see every piece of their energy and water consumption. Using beautiful, uh, novel, biologically inspired design interfaces, you can track every watt of power in every hour, every drop of water, and see how every decision you make is gonna affect your energy use, not just today, but tomorrow, next month, the year after, your cost, your environmental impact, you can track all of that. And you can set modes, say you wanna read, you can decide what a reading mode would be and then allow the system to, to help you optimize and learn what that behavior is. And it's not just enough to do that in one room. We did it in every room by building custom designed control switches that use the same biological procedure, a heartbeat, to show how much energy was being used. Just like your own heart, when you're using more energy, it beats faster and slower when the house is at rest. Through this, we could program any number of methods. We could actually teach the homeowner what their impacts are and then allow you to teach your house how you like to live. And then the best part, with just a single gesture, just by swiping down on any switch in any room, you can turn off all of the lights and all of the appliances so that when you leave the house or go to sleep, there's no chance that you're wasting any extra energy. 
But we didn't just stop with energy, we wanted to address water too. So in the bathroom, we included a digital thermostat that allows you to set the temperature you want the water at and with a button turn it on rather than wasting all that water, energy and time waiting for it to be just the right temperature before you can step in. We changed the sink too so that you have to lean against a bar below it to actually make the water flow. You have to keep putting pressure on it to make that water come out. Now, before that seems strange, the reason we did this is that we use so much energy in the state of California just to move water to all of our buildings that we thought the best way to learn what that impact is is to experience it firsthand. Put in energy, make water. Even this though, this is just a good collection of technologies. This is a step in the right direction. It's a step towards more truly sustainable living, but this wasn't far enough for us either. We can do this, put it in a show house, that's great, you walk in, you see it, and you leave, and then what? So we came up with a new idea. Prefabricated houses have been around for so many years, but we don't like them. They don't let us have our own creativity, our own flexibility to design what we want. But maybe we could use that idea and create just, just one piece for the house. So we did. It's a simple, elegant box that we call the core. It has all of the water saving features, all of the energy saving features, and is ready to plug in any device that you might have and help you learn what it does, help you reduce your energy, and teach how to control it. It's designed to be built in a factory, to be prefabricated cost effectively. It can be mass produced and then shipped anywhere in the world so that you can build your dream house right around that. Maintain the creativity, the flexibility, the livability of the home, but also be ready to start a sustainable lifestyle. Whether you want to build a two-story house in Boston, say, or a ranch house in Pasadena, maybe a house up in the Marin Headlands where you have a beautiful view of the ocean, or even your own version of the start home. The core becomes a way to really be the green brain for your house. It's solar ready, it's ready to plug in any device, it's ready to teach and learn, it is the future of home building. And all of this from the minds of a team of graduates and undergraduates with zero experience in development, zero experience in home building, and just a passion for trying to solve a truly wicked problem. Now here's the kicker, we haven't even scratched the tip of the iceberg on this one. Homes are just the end point in a system of a network of nodes, of pipes, of wires, of people, of buses, of cars, and the whole system has to be rethought. As our cities grow, our impact on the environment is exponentially increasing, and we need to rethink the entire framework if we're going to maintain livable cities that have cultural and historic re relevance and are also sustainable. The world is changing, and places like China, like India, Brazil and the Middle East, these are the Wild West. This is the new frontier. No idea is crazy. Cities are being built around the world on a daily basis and any idea is possible for how we're going to change the way that we're living. Not only that, the city is the perfect scale to experiment with all of these problems, with poverty, with economy, with global health. Even here in California, our urban population is increasing and we need solutions to deal with this growth. The suburbs are a thing of the past. We need a new framework. And here's the best part. People who've been in the industry for 40 years, they're not the ones who are gonna lead it. They can't envision it. They're stuck in a paradigm and a bias from what we've done in the past. It's us, it's everybody who's bold, inexperienced, and young, who can make the greatest difference in envisioning a world outside of those traditional four walls, outside of that traditional box. Something, an entirely new way of living that we don't even know what it is yet. And it's gonna have to solve all of those challenges. So pick your favorite, whether it's poverty, economy, health, climate change, another really tough problem, and get to work. See what you can do. After all, if a team of students from Stanford could change the future of home building, what can you do? Thank you.